Eric Arthur Blair, better known by his pen name George Orwell, was a brilliant 20th century English writer who transformed literature with his cutting social commentary and allegorical style. Considered classics, his novels Animal Farm and 1984 are read in classrooms around the world. His works have become so entrenched in popular culture and politics that the term Orwellian is now commonly used to describe totalitarian and authoritarian societies. Orwell also wrote numerous non-fiction books and essays documenting his own life experiences, which also reveal his talent for satire and controversial views on government. Throughout her writing career, she has never been afraid to tackle challenging topics and speak her mind, no matter how subversive. Check out George Orwell's best quotes on truth, reality, freedom, politics, power, and money. Enjoy. There was truth, and there was untruth. And if you clung to the truth even against the whole world, you were not mad. Reality exists in the human mind, and nowhere else. This is the inevitable fate of the sentimentalist. All his opinions change into their opposites at the first brush of reality. It's the one thing they can't do. They can make you say anything, anything, but they can't make you believe it. They can't get inside you. And when memory failed and written records were falsified, when that happened, the claim of the party to have improved the conditions of human life had got to be accepted because there did not exist and never again could exist any standard against which it could be tested. If all others accepted the lie which the party imposed, if all records told the same tale, then the lie passed into history and became truth. The creatures outside looked from pig to man, and from man to pig, and from pig to man again, but already it was impossible to say which was which. The best books are those that tell you what you know already. Freedom is the freedom to say that, to plus, to make for. If that is granted, all else follows. Here you come upon the important fact that every revolutionary opinion draws part of its strength from a secret conviction that nothing can be changed. Above all, there was a belief in the revolution and the future, a feeling of having suddenly emerged into an air of equality and freedom. The masses never revolt of their own accord, and they never revolt merely because they are oppressed. Indeed, so long as they are not permitted to have standards of comparison, they never even become aware that they are oppressed. I sometimes think that the price of liberty is not so much eternal vigilance as eternal dirt. To die hating them, that was freedom. We are living in a world in which nobody is free, in which hardly anybody is secure, in which it is almost impossible to be honest and to remain alive. That the choice for mankind lay between freedom and happiness and that, for the great bulk of mankind, happiness was better. War is peace. Freedom is slavery. Ignorance is strength. Power is in tearing human minds to pieces and putting them together again in new shapes of your own choosing. Man serves the interests of no creature except himself. Who controls the past controls the future. Who controls the present controls the past. There are occasions when it pays better to fight and be beaten than not to fight at all. It is the same in all wars, the soldiers do the fighting, the journalists do the shouting, and no true patriot ever gets near a front, line trench, except on the briefest of propaganda tours. 
For before you can be sure whether you are genuinely in favor of socialism, you have got to decide whether things at present are tolerable or not tolerable, and you have got to take up a definite attitude on the terribly difficult issue of class. All the war, propaganda, all the screaming and lies and hatred comes invariably from people who are not fighting. We know that no one ever seizes power with the intention of relinquishing it. One does not establish a dictatorship in order to safeguard a revolution. One makes the revolution in order to establish the dictatorship. No one believes more firmly than comrade Napoleon that all animals are equal. He would be only too happy to let you make your decisions for yourselves, but sometimes you might make the wrong decisions, comrades, and then where should we be? In order to hate imperialism, you have got to be part of it. It is this fear of a supposedly dangerous mob that makes nearly all intelligent people conservative in their opinions. Power is not a means, it is an end. All animals are equal, but some animals are more equal than others. Man is the only creature that consumes without producing. Yet he is lord of all the animals. He sets them to work. He gives back to them the bare minimum that will prevent them from starving, and the rest he keeps for himself. It is curious how people take it for granted that they have a right to preach at you and pray over you as soon as your income falls below a certain level. For after all, what is there behind it except money? Money for the right kind of education, money for influential friends, money for leisure and peace of mind, money for trips to Italy, money writes books, Money sells them. Give me not righteousness, O Lord. Give me money, only money. Poverty frees them from ordinary standards of behavior, just as money frees people from work. You can possess money or you can despise money. The one fatal thing is to worship money and fail to get it. The mass of the rich and the poor are differentiated by their incomes and nothing else. And the average millionaire is only the average dishwasher dressed in a new suit. Poverty is spiritual halitosis. If you set yourself to it, you can live the same life, rich or poor. You can still keep on with your books and your ideas. You just got to say to yourself, I'm a free man in here and you're all right. In practice, nobody cares whether work is useful or useless, productive or parasitic. The sole thing demanded is that it shall be profitable. In all the modern talk about energy, efficiency, social service, and the rest of it, what meaning is there except get money? Get it legally and get a lot of it. Money has become the grand test of virtue. Faith, hope, money. Only a saint could have the first two without having the third. Within certain limits, it is actually true that the less money you have, the less you worry. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our video.